Hello all. The last game went so bad I thought I'd play immediately afterwards, or at least as soon as I get paired. And yeah. This time the starting position 735. I might have played this before, I can't remember. Wow. Wants to develop the other bishop to h2. Probably a good idea. Maybe. I may play just f5. Why not? And open up the bishops that way. Should I take it with the rook or the pawn? And <laughs> taking with the rook. Sure, but only because I don't want the h pawn to get isolated. Somehow I don't think that this is gonna go all that much, I mean, in a better way than the last game, but let's see, e5 I guess. Trying to get hold of the center. Might actually play bishop to e6 next. With the idea of rook h5. And basically win this pawn. What the? <laughs> what is this guy doing? Who knows? I'm just gonna play this. Win a pawn and be happy. However, I probably should develop my pieces. But at least I will win a pawn here. Let's take with the bishop, of course. Threaten the rook. And maybe do some nasty things there. Well, bishop to g4. Nah. No good discoveries with the bishop, at least not yet. <laughs> this is so much, so not the way one maybe should play. Let's do this. Develop the piece, the remainder of the piece that is, and um, this rook is maybe not so well placed it may face annoying moves like bishop to f3 maybe e4 and then bishop f3 might be extremely annoying hmm just wondering how the how my opponent could trap the Rook. I might play d5 next. Wow, not the move I anticipated at all. Maybe I just play d5. I think the bishop try to follow it up with. Okay, now bishop f3. But I assume I can play this. I 
I probably couldn't because <laughs> Rook G3 and the my bishop is trapped. Wow. But now that I saw that it happened, should I play e4 actually? <laughs> Further make things complicated. No, I'm just gonna play here. Give the bishop some room to back up. And nothing dangerous is happening that I can see. Well, it dies on the square e6, but maybe I don't care about it. Since the bishop is still covering e6. Alright. Now I need to move the knight again. Or play c6, but c6 opens up this diagonal and I'm not a bit more and the vulnerability of my king becomes apparent, I guess. Well, I guess now e4 is a thing that I want to play, maybe. I assume bishop g4, otherwise I just win a pawn. Well, I mean bishop g2 would have worked too. Need to take that out. <laughs> I may be a bit overly careful with the pawn captures this time around. But I think I can take it. Really? I don't think this works, but... Um, if nothing else, it's at least very annoying, since my king has to go to c6 in order to avoid the perpetual check there is some danger no doubt but I guess I can take the bishop now hmm And now I probably could play this knight here. No. Maybe. I'm just wanting to. Well, a5, of course, comes into mind, but. <laughs> it might be dangerous for me as well as for my opponent. But I'm not sure if my opponent can actually take advantage of moves like that. And of course if I can play takes and takes queen f6 is interesting. Hmm. Sorry about that. Um, hmm. Now I assume the knight's headed to d4, obviously. And queen f6 is no longer all that viable. Can I play a queen here?
if knight d4 check which never came so never mind that I guess I will go to h5 with the rook I didn't even see that the knight is hanging too, but of course I don't want to take that in that position. Risky, risky, risky. I'm still gonna do it. I would like to get the queen so that uh, So the well, queen of eight, wanting to go to the long diagonal, obviously, and create some nasty threats there. Actually, I'm not sure what the what my opponent will do. That doesn't really help since since in passant is possible. And it's really hard to see what my opponent should do because all the roads seem to lead to mate, but they're okay, I guess not. Or maybe Queen check here and Rook takes A two. Should two interesting things. Actually it's not made still but um, quite close perhaps. And this should be made right. Yep. <coughs> so rematch when my opponent offers a rematch, eh? Well, let's play a rematch. Okay. So let's see what what's going on here. G4. Not so commonly played. G3 preferred by most players here. And then G6. Wow. 92% of the 12 games have resulted in the win for the black side of things. So, promising start there from my point of view. Then h3. Only played twice. And after f5 it went. No. Actually, there's um, another game where f5 was played. Then g takes f5 only once played and it was in this game. So it didn't follow that much of what other people have done before. Nothing all that much interesting I guess according to the computer at least until bishop e4 was played which was a mistake. And I didn't play the best either should have played bishop f5 in response, but let's see, so bishop g3, d6, f4, takes, takes, and bishop to d7. Hmm. Knight to a5, bishop f3, rook f5, 
Let's see d4. Rook f8, bishop g5, bishop f6, and well, here, even though black hasn't. I mean, it's um, behind in development suddenly. Still, black's position might be promising, considering the duo h7 and g6. Might be a strong pawn there. Okay, let's look at this. So what happens? Bishop b4. I should have gone to f5, but the bishop instead of d5. Not sure about this. Neither I'm sure about the correctness of bishop takes f5. Bishop, um, f3 might have been a more annoying move. What? <laughs> well, of course, better than to just take the f5. Bishop, because in this way, the bishop and the pawn are undefended and attacked, which means black went a pawn. Not that I would have been able to see all of this in the game. So, okay. And after that, it seems it went quite nicely until I played rook takes f2. A plunder, possibly losing plunder. Oh yeah. Knight checked there. Can't take, but have to take, and then knight g6 check. Wow. <laughs> what the? And of course, this is clearly hopeless. <laughs> oh wow. But since my opponent checked with the wrong knight, it was completely losing for him after or her. And yeah, not much to say about the rest of the game. <laughs>